Hey guys, uh, welcome to another five minute quick tutorial. Today I want to talk about spiraling uh, and kind of give you a visual representation of how I do it um, and then you'll be better equipped for your manual piloting classes when it comes up uh, on how and, and why. Uh, so to so start off I've got a um, I've got a little scenario set up here. The Akater out here is what I'm going to be spiraling against. Uh, it's not the optimal ship to worry about spiraling. Uh, generally, they're pretty safe. You can just tackle them normally, but this is the ship my alt happened to be in at the time, and so that's the ship I'm going to use. Um, arguably, in any combat situation, spiraling is a good choice, so it doesn't really matter what your target ship is. Uh, as for myself, I am in a Malediction. Uh, it's a Tech 2 interceptor of the Amar race, and... Um, generally uh, kind of the one of the better options for your fast tackle at this stage in the game. Uh, so we're going to go through a quick checklist here and then we're going to kind of uh, walk you through my process of spiraling in. So uh, the first thing you want to do is figure out at what range you want to be orbiting when you're uh, when you're in your final position when you when you're actually orbiting the target at what range you want to be. Uh, for interceptors, usually this is uh, kind of at the edge of your point range. You sort of keep them at the edge of your sword uh, to control range better. Um, very rarely do you want to get too close, because if you get too close, that makes you susceptible to webs, to scrams, to newts, and things like that. And so beyond uh, point range is usually, or the, the edge of your point range is usually a good way to go. Also, if you're any closer than 24 kilometers, then your average ship with a Tech 2 warp disruptor can point you. Uh, as you can see here, I've brought up my uh, warp disruptor, and uh, it's got a range of 28 kilometers. This is because I have the interceptor skill level 4. If I had it at level 5, it would bring it up to 30 kilometers. But this is kind of the range we want to sit at. You don't want to sit at exactly 28 kilometers, because if the uh, target pulls range even just a little bit, uh, they can pull out of your point range and warp off. And so you want to keep them on the inside of 28 kilometers just so that you have some wiggle room if they try some fancy piloting. Um, in this case, the Akater is pretty slow and it wouldn't be much of a problem, but against faster targets, you want to get a little closer so you have wiggle room. Uh, you can also overheat it. Uh, which will give it 34 kilometers in my case, which gives you that extra space. If they start to pull out of range, you can increase your uh, you can increase your your uh, range significantly. All right, so we'll turn that off. We have also got a scram, which is also bonus uh, and can be overheated uh, out to 10 kilometers. I don't use a Tech 2 scram. You can, uh, I believe, you can get that out to 13 kilometers, uh, but that's not really something we're going to use today. Uh, there's, uh, the scram usually ends up being situational. So we know that we want to be within 28 kilometers uh, outside of 24 kilometers. So roughly the 25, 26 kilometer mark. Uh, you can go ahead and click on anything in space and set your default orbit by right clicking on the orbit icon and set it. And you can see that I've got mine set to 26.5 kilometers. Uh, this is a good is a good range, but this is important to note is any orbit that you take is for your raw speed and if you do anything to increase your speed it also increases the radius of the orbit. So by activating my micro warp drive, which I'll likely have on as an interceptor, uh, the range will go uh, out and I'll be closer to that 28 kilometer mark. So maybe with that in account I might want to set this to 24 uh, kilometers or 2400 meters so that when I finish closing range um, and I have my micro warp drive on it'll push me out uh, to 26, 27 kilometers. Uh, it's, it takes a little finesse, you'll have to wiggle it around, it's going to change based on the speed of the ship uh, and different things like that so you'll constantly be adjusting this value. Um, when you get really good at manual piloting you won't need it at all. Uh, you could, excuse me, you can just uh, you can just orbit naturally uh, using double clicks in space, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna sort of cheat today and sort of give you kind of a fast track in doing it. So the second thing, I'm sorry, that was a terrible segue. Uh, so the next thing uh, to be concerned with is uh, being able to center the target in your view, and so to do that, you're gonna want to turn on your tracking camera. 
So let's say you don't have this. If you click this, it'll show buttons, and you've got your three view modes. You've got the tactical camera, uh, first person view mode, which does nothing, and orbit camera, which is what we're going to use today. You can also see that I've got the, the grid on. You can turn that on and off, but it helps uh, with ranges. The ranges of any modules will be demonstrated uh, on your overview. It's interesting. The missile range seems short. Okay, sorry. Uh, carrying on. Uh, it looks like we're going to be orbiting this here, so we're going to set our orbit camera on, and then we want to toggle auto tracking. And what this does is when you click an object in space or in the overview, normally nothing happens and the camera just kind of pans around. If you turn the tracking camera on, and you can see the icon changes. Anything you click in space, the camera snaps to. And this is handy for tracking targets in space. Uh, you can see that it's a little offset. If you just click and move the mouse a little bit, it completely centers it. Uh, but being offset like that doesn't change anything that we're going to do today. Alright, so we got our target. We got them centered in the camera. Now we got to set up our good spiral. Obviously, Going in full on against anything with turrets would just wreck us, um, or any missiles we'd be flying head on into the missiles or drones or anything like that. So we want to come in at an angle uh, because it's it's better for us. So what I recommend doing and, and what is the normal way to do it is to click anywhere between the edge of the screen and the center of the screen where your ship is. Now the target will always be centered and the edge of your screen is a fixed point. So anywhere in this little gap, and you can pick up, down, left, right, diagonal, whatever, anywhere between uh, the middle or the middle of your screen and the edge of your screen will be a good point to start spiraling. So I usually go in between, like halfway, roughly halfway between both those spots, and we're going to start manual piloting here. Uh, and this gives you a good like 45 degree angle if you can sort of see it from the top down. You sort of get like a I'm sorry, that's more like a 15 or 30 degree angle. Uh, but you can see um, this is perpendicular, this is at the target roughly, and you're kind of going in between. And that's kind of what you're looking for. That's the optimal, um, that's the optimal distance between um, approaching, where you would theoretically take more damage, and taking a wider angle, which takes longer to get to the target. And so you can see that the target's slowly drifting around uh, as we move, so we want to continuously update our orbit. And this will be just a simple process of double clicking in space, and it slowly turns your ship around the target. Okay, so uh, let me turn on my micro warp drive for some speed, and then you just slowly kind of bring yourself around, and as you get in range, you can lock the target and do some more orbiting. And then when you get close, click Manual Orbit. And this is a thing you'll have to watch out for, is sometimes when you click Orbit, it'll rapidly change your uh, direction. Uh, it's just a bug of the, of the program. But you can see now that with my Micro Warp Drive on and set to orbit at 24 kilometers, I'm actually orbiting the target at about 25, 26. And this is a good clean orbit. I'm outside of his long point range if he had one. I can long point him back and basically can control this fight. If he pushes in on me, I can pull range because I'm a faster ship. If he starts to pull range on me, I can close the distance and have plenty of time left uh, to get the um, uh, before I lose my long point. So I'm going to pull range a little bit and... Uh, we'll see this again with the full micro warp drive on. And so again, usually, and this is an extended range, usually you don't end up going at this range. Uh, you know, usually you're not fortunate enough to be 100 kilometers, and, and if you are, they'll, they'll likely warp off. You'll, you'll generally have to set this up uh, on the fly at much closer ranges. But again, I've just I've got my target centered with the tracking camera, and I just double click in space to adjust my orbit angle. And as I close in, we're going to establish a nice lock. 
and then as I close the range that I want, I click Auto Orbit, and my craft will again do that obnoxious 180. Actually, that was a bad spiral um, because it pulled me out of range, but then the ship corrects itself and you're good to go. So one more time, hopefully without being terrible. And you can see with the speed of an interceptor that this happens really quickly. I close that distance really fast. Uh, but what you'd like, uh, ideally like to do is around the time you're locking it, when it's in your lock range, you're also clicking orbit because it'll it'll prevent you from getting too close like I just did that last time. And then to correct itself, it makes the ship fly uh, just directly away from the target. So we pulled range again, and I'm going to again double click. And if I double click closer to the edge of the screen, it'll be a tighter spiral, uh, which will get me there faster, but puts me at the risk of damage. If I click further out, it's a wider spiral, uh, but the downside is uh, that it takes me longer to get to the target. I'll be less susceptible to damage, but it'll take me longer to close the distance. So again, we're just going to spiral in. As we get close to about 30 kilometers is where you actually want to hit the, uh, the orbit button. And it should give you a nice coasted orbit. But again, auto orbit what it is likes to turn you around for whatever reason. So if you're fighting a ship and that becomes an issue, uh, what you'll ideally want to do is time the pressing of your orbit button or in between volleys of shots. So when you hear the when you see the damage notification appear in the center of the screen that says, you know, roughly right uh right where my damage is, right in here. Um where you see that appear it'll tell you that the target has missed you or hit you or whatever. And when you see that pop up, it's usually an indication that they're between turret cycles and you can catch up and close the distance. But anyway, uh, bad examples aside, that is how I set up an orbit, and that is how uh, you can sort of cheat uh, to get your orbit going. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to message me on Slack, and thanks for watching.